this screencast video is to cover some of the basic features of the 1002 digital oscilloscope we use in our first year labs. Also, as an example, we're going to be using some features that we'll be seeing in our longitudinal standing waves lab. The Physics 122 will have already used the oscilloscopes for their threshold of hearing lab, whereas the 112, this will be the first time you've used an oscilloscope. And I'll use the, the same uh, little video and we're going to start and pause it and go along. So if you take a look, this is your screen. Right now you've got two signals on your screen. You've got a top one, frequency one, okay? And this channel signal is right here. It's labeled with the little number one. This is the signal straight from our little black 750 interface, okay? It's a nice clean signal. And the height on the screen represents how many volts. So if you take a look here, there's a little, and you'll see better in the screen, but there's roughly these all these little tick marks. So there's roughly two little divisions up here. The channel one is set to 100 millivolts per division, so this would represent a signal roughly 200 millivolts from top to bottom, or roughly about 100 millivolts in amplitude. The bottom signal, channel two, is the signal from the little microphone that's on the end of our standing wave chamber. That one is a signal from a signal. Channel one is driving the speaker back and forth in terms of its amplitude. Channel 2 is the one from the speaker. Now this one here, channel 2, you can see is set at 5 millivolts per division. So from bottom to top, that would only represent 10 millivolts high, or roughly 5 millivolts in amplitude, top to bottom. Okay, And that's all I'm going to do in terms of the setup. So I'll talk about what happens when you change the volts per division knobs, the seconds per division knobs, the trigger knob. We'll also go over to the measure and a couple other things. So starting the video. You can hear the 1500 hertz sound. The position knob for channel one only changes the channel one signal. So if you move that up or down, you're changing the signal where it appears on the screen, but you're not actually changing the signal. In fact, anything you do on the oscilloscope doesn't change the signal itself, just changes how it appears. So the volts per division knob would change the height. So when you're changing that knob, it's how many volts per division are displayed on the screen. You can make it zoom in or zoom out. If you go too small, what ends up happening is you might lose track of the signal in terms of how it appears on the screen. It'll start to get a little messy there. What's happening there is the trigger is not set correctly. And what it's looking for is for the signal to change in a predictable way. And by changing the trigger, more advanced features in other courses, you can change how that gets triggered and set it up so it always starts at the same part of the waveform each time and it'll be nice and clean. Now the measure can do some things. One of the things it can do is try to get a nice accurate frequency, okay, in which case it'll take the frequency, do some mathematical uh, integrals and try to get a nice accurate value. You should get lots of sig figs for this one. Now one thing that I want to point out is the frequency is related to time or how wide it appears on your screen. So just like the volts per division, when you're changing your knobs here, you're changing how it appears on your screen, not the signal itself. So if you change the setting, it'll appear wider or smaller, but the multiplication, the actual frequency, doesn't actually change. The second one is just the same. You can change those independently. So change that knob, it appears taller or smaller. And the last thing we're going to do is I'm just going to show you what happens when you change the size of the chamber right here and what effect that will have on your generated speaker signal. One thing to point out is the generated sound that is being sent to the speaker is a constant and that's one of the reasons why you'll see that this signal itself doesn't change. This one is representing the sound that is received by the microphone which is affected by the noise level and the resonance within the chamber. So as you change that, the signal from the microphone will go up or down. And when you hit a resonance, what will end up happening is the signal will reach a maximum. So what you're looking for is the position at which it's a maximum. Okay? You can change the volts per division so you can get it on nicely on the screen. Now another thing I want to point out lastly is the fact that even though they're very different sizes, we can make them appear roughly the same size okay, and overlap them. And the reason I wanted to do that is just to show you something in terms of the phase. So if we overlap them and make them look like they're roughly the same size here, okay, 
you'll see that the waveform from channel 1, the nice clean one, that one there, and the signal from the microphone are phase shifted. The displacement is the left-right longitudinal wave displacement from representation from the speaker, because the speaker is going back and forth longitudinally, whereas the other one is the microphone, which receives a pressure signal. So when the pressure is high, this one will be at a maximum, whereas this one here, when the displacement is high, this one will be at a maximum. They are phase shifted, so they don't happen at exactly the same place. And that's it for the video. This recording.